No OG Ananobi, no Julius Randle, no matter. Jalen Brunson, 32 points. He's now had at least 30 in seven of his last eight games. And Dante DiVincenzo goes for 28. And here's what the crowd from Charlotte said. It was a road game, hard to tell. Knicks win at 113-92. They've won seven in a row and 13 of the last 15. Great to have you with us. What amazing support on the road for the Knicks there. Brooklyn, yeah. you got a lot of that in Brooklyn. You get a lot of that in Washington. You get a lot of that in Atlanta, Orlando. You definitely get a lot of that support when the Knicks are rolling and playing as well as they're playing. And a night like tonight, that third quarter, that 44-point outburst, the 14-0 run to put this game away, it felt like a home game. MSG South is what they're calling a lot of these arenas these days. From our Delta MSG studios, Bill Peter along with Alan Hahn. Wally Zerbiak will join us here in a couple of moments. So the night began. We knew Julius Randle was going to be out. We didn't know OG Ananobi was going to be out, but he has a sore right elbow. Got it irritated a little bit in warm-ups and didn't play, but it didn't matter. The Knicks were able to hang in in, their, in the first half. They're up by three after two quarters, and then they outscored Charlotte in the third quarter, 44-24. to 24. That's the Knicks' best quarter of the entire season. It's bet, yeah, and, and for the Knicks, you were just waiting for when they were going to break this thing open because it was a struggle early on, especially from three-point range, and both teams really did struggle. But when you have Jalen Brunson on the floor and he's hearing MVP chants from a road crowd, you know you got a chance at any moment this thing was going to break open, and that's exactly what it did. And Brunson was behind all of it, not just with the scoring, the 15 points in the quarter, but also with assists and the playmaking. But as I said, you just look at how hard he goes to the basket, and he just drives and finishes. And, of course, finishing Isaiah Hartenstein, who did not play a lot in this game, only 16 minutes, but still productive with 10 points. But, it, Bill, it just felt like a matter of time, didn't it? It was 46 to 43 at the half, and you wondered, this Charlotte team that had been struggling, when did the Knicks put the pedal to the metal and blow them out? And it happened to come in that third quarter where they were just incredibly dominant. In that third quarter, he had Brunson with 15. DiVincenzo scored 12, which was 28. By the way, DiVincenzo in this game, the 28 points, attempts a career high, 22 shots, 5 of 15 from downtown. You see the Knicks in that third quarter, 17 of 21 from the floor. That's 81% as they blew the game wide open. We now bring in Wally Zerbiak from Charlotte. He'll call the game tonight on ESPN Radio 98.7 FM. Wally, great to see you. What do you think of the game tonight? Oh, outstanding. Come on, Bill. Do you even have to ask me that? That was a fun one to watch. Just a display of a team that's going in the right direction, a franchise that's just all about winning, guys stepping up, making plays. And Jalen Brunson, this guy is so good. He was just abusing that Hornets defense. He had that Hornets team putting their heads down, didn't know what to do in that third period. And that was just a big-time character win and a great job by a team when they were throwing some curveballs without a couple of their starters in the lineup. Yeah, easy on my guy, though, Wally. That first half was a little unsightly with some of the shooting now. That third quarter, though, was certainly special. And, and Jalen Brunson, in the middle of all of it, no surprise, and how about the MVP chance he was hearing on the road there in Charlotte? What was that atmosphere like? There you go again, Mr. Negative, bringing up the first half. They needed to adjust. It's been the first time without two starters in the lineup. And what do they do? What great teams do in that third period, that's when you come out, you step on a, a team that's really struggling, lost three in a row. But overall, the crowd was outstanding. I mean, it is just so cool. At halftime, I was going to the restroom, and I was grabbing a quick drink up there at the concession stand. There are Nick fans in Nick gear all over the place in this arena. It felt like Madison Square our garden south down here at the spectrum center and that is demoralizing for another team mm -hmm. you can see this young hornets team when they hear the crowd chanting mvp and getting up for a lot of plays in the new york knicks favor that's tough to deal with when you're on your home floor well worth pointing out you got josh hart starting because of the injuries and he goes for eight points and 12 rebounds and precious achua is really starting to play well his first start this year as a nick and he goes for nine and five he played really well as well 
And also the defense, Bill. That's the big thing I love with Precious Achua. He is such a versatile big man that he can guard multiple positions. Even if he gets switched off on a guard, he does a great job moving his feet, and that's what Tom Thibodeau loves. And I give the front office a lot of credit because they bring the right personnel in that Tom Thibodeau knows how to coach and knows how to play to their strengths. And Precious Achua has found a home here in a place where his abilities and his strengths are going to be maximized to the fullest. And he did a really good job not just not just going crazy with numbers or anything, but just being solid. And that's what Tom Thibodeau loves. He loves his guys to play their role, do their job every single night, and that's why this team is blowing teams off the floor. The backcourt combined for 60 points in this game. So we talked about Jalen Brunson, but how about Dante DiVincenzo? I don't know if you said, I can't remember, Wally, if you said that that arena, is it a good shooting gym or not? Because DiVincenzo certainly thinks it's a good shooting gym. He had another big night there. Yeah, he had seven threes previously, his career high. It's a great shooting gym. Dark seats, that's the big thing. Dark background, you really highlight that basket, highlight the rim, and when you're playing against a team like the Charlotte Hornets who are really struggling defensively and they're going to give you open looks, it's, uh, it's a good sign that Dante DiVincenzo is taking 22 shots. I saw him at the beginning uh, while he was warming up before the game. I said, hey, you ready? You're going to get more looks at the basket. He said, don't worry, I'll be ready, and he sure <laughs> did. He got 22 his career high I love it I love when shooters shoot I love when shooters have confidence and are aggressive and he also showed more to his game not just catch and shoot threes he was putting the ball on the floor getting to the basket running pick and roll making plays for his teammates and that's another thing I really observed I observed how smart this our Nick the New York Knicks team was and just making the right play getting good shots every single time down the floor that's what this coaching staff preaches and that's what the players are doing all about the FGAs I knew you'd go there with that one Wally. <laughs> All right, so it's the first game now of a back-to-back, -back, and they're playing Utah tomorrow at the Garden. Utah playing tonight in Brooklyn, so a back-to-back -back certainly for them. But can you, when you consider mostly an eight-man rotation now, you know, what do you see, see for tomorrow night to finish out the month? Knicks can get the win. At home, they're going to need their crowd. The fans are going to have to step up, bring them energy. But I was interested to see how this team was going to operate with no Julius Randle and no OG Ananobi. And it was no problem because of Jalen Brunson. The teams are not going to be able to stop this guy. He is playing at a top five level in the NBA right now with the way he's putting this team on his shoulders, with the way he's scoring the basketball, and also with the way as a point guard he breaks down the defense so easily. Every time down the floor, he makes the right play. He gets by his defender every single time whenever he wants. Then he gets in the paint, dishes off to Isaiah Hartenstein, finds his shooters in the corners and on the wings. With Jalen Brunson on the floor, the Knicks are going to be, I think, be able to, I think, think whether these injuries that they're dealing with okay well as always we appreciate it we'll see you tomorrow night have a great trip home you got it can't wait to get home to nyc all right knicks host utah tomorrow night Wally mentioned the defense the knicks have held the opposition under 100 points allen now 14 times that leads the nba they have the best defense in the nba since the trade for og and anobi and it's interesting that he didn't play tonight and yet they were still able to play high-level defense. It's almost as if they unlocked something, figured it out, the roles that everybody also understood that they needed. It, it, even without OG now, you can still see the defense there. Now, we know Charlotte's this is a struggling team, but to still hold them under 100 points is significant. It's an NBA team. I mean, they, this team has scored over 100. This team is averaging over 100, often 10, actually. So that is a significant thing for the month holding a team by average under 100 points. In today's NBA, well, we're seeing 150, 140. We're seeing players go for 60 and 70. It's remarkable what, how well this defense is playing right now. Worth also mentioning, uh, Deuce McBride, excellent tonight off the bench, had 11 points, three of six from downtown. So, all smiles from the Knicks coach. As again, worth pointing out, they are 13 and two in the month of January.